Jake, for a really excellent uh, scene setter to our debate. I suppose I should invite our panel um, up onto the stage as well so we can get started and uh, talk about our exam question. Um, before, as our, as our panelists come up, I'll just briefly announce um, our, well, we've met them already, haven't we? We've got, a, we've got Anya, we've got Eric, we have Piotr and Derek from Geoban. So please, please take a seat. Right, well, just very briefly, um, it's great to be here at ABSL again. Always really enjoy uh, these sessions. It's an excellent, uh, excellent event with good debate. So hopefully, we we'll keep up the tradition, um, keep the tradition going. Now, um, now our exam question is: Are old, lean, and six sigma still good enough? to increase customer satisfaction. So we've been hearing just now stories about improvement and innovation and getting more for less and impressing customers. Uh, that's what it's been about this morning, some really good stories. So the question is, how does Lean and Six Sigma and perhaps other related improvement tools and philosophies, strategies, how do they fit into that given everything we're hearing this conference about the guys next door with robots or around data mining or customer insight in this new world, how do those well-established old uh, favorite names fit in the future? I think that's really, really the question. Um, and I'll just declare my um, status as an outsourcing shared services advisor. I'm certainly not an expert in this field, so I'll be interrogating, keen to know the answers um, uh, from you. Um, and I think we'll just, we'll have it very, free-ranging, good to have a debate. Um, but let's, let's break it down into three questions, I think, or three, th three areas. How do these tools, methodologies, approaches fit now? How are they positioned for the future, in this, this bright new future we're talking about? And then maybe if we have time, a few uh, tips at the end about how to take, take this forward. So I'm just going to open with a, with that, with a broad question um, around uh, how do you see Lean, Six Sigma, uh, taking customer satisfaction forward, making an impact. I mean, how briefly, how do you see them uh, advancing that improvement agenda? I don't know if anyone wants to take that. Piotr? I can start. I can start. Thank, Thank you. you. So, yeah, uh, that's, I think we should recap on, on the presentation. Very nice presentation for Wojciech. And then actually, it's my experience with, uh, with Lean, uh, more Lean than Six Sigma, really. But... Uh, what is Six Sigma uh, uh, for me is more of a project management and more of a long term and definitely does impact the, the customer satisfaction, but indirectly uh, through better processes we have in our company, or processes we deliver to the customer as well, uh, or the products are better. Uh, Lean is, is definitely more customer focused and more outcome based, more of that what our customers want really, the, the results and improvement to, to happen uh, quicker. Uh, and, and, and I believe that has a more of a direct, direct impact. But uh, yeah, uh, definitely a, st a statement like to uh, continue with what Wojciech already said, that that will not happen without people, leadership, without a, a proper strategy setting and a proper deployment. And the, this question about old Lean Six Sigma, well, the methodologies might be old, but when you think your, your implementation of Lean is old, that it's something wrong, definitely. It, it cannot be long, mm -hmm. uh, old, because it, it's a continuous improvement that should make it up to date every day, every 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 single minute. Thank you, Piotr. Derek, do you want to come in on that? It, it, have, have they been an important part of, of your journey at Geoban? Yes, uh, my name is Darius Bazali. I didn't present. I see I, I took the stage from Kasha. <laughs> I was tricked by Marek. <laughs> uh, and just want to say, contrary to Kasha, I hope you do not interact with us in the Dispute Service Center because we only uh, resolve the customer problems. So I hope you don't have any problems uh, with the banks. Um, I think overall Lean Six Sigma, I think at least Lean from our perspective, I'm just going to talk about our experience mm -hmm. that we have, This just the, the limited knowledge that we have. I think it allowed us uh, to look at a customer first, because all the methodology, all the tools are sort of based on you have to search for value in the process and the value is defined as a way, as something that the customer would like to pay for and that makes you look at the process in its entirety from a customer perspective. So initially uh, when we implemented it was very useful to look, uh, to use
use it and look from a customer perspective. Now I'm, I was, I'm thinking of being a bit controversial and, and, and say that it's, it's nice to have, but I see that there are, I think there are other uh, ways to look at it, other methodologies, other um, uh, if customer satisfaction potential improvements that not on, don't necessarily come only from Lean or Six Sigma. You can look much broader. So what we're trying to look right now is look broader okay. or maybe you know rattle the cage a bit and, and be a disruptor inside our organizations and maybe question a bit why do we need to do all these okay. Lean and Six Sigma things? Great, okay. If we need to do it. So I can see the start of Maybe a fight. Maybe we fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's yeah, yeah, but I will lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been part of the story to date, but you're suggesting maybe maybe there's some, uh, some change in the, in the future. Um, uh, Anna, do you want to tell us about the perspective from CAP and whether it's been important in your customer satisfaction yeah. so far? Uh, I've been talking a lot about the customer experience and the satisfaction mm. earlier today. Somehow I perceive the entire outsourcing as a huge lean project. We mm. standardize the services, we centralize them, we make them more efficient. And um, what, what happened in Capgemini recently that I am uh, experiencing throughout my journey with Capgemini is that at the very beginning we were perceived uh, as the, you know, the providers of the accounting services, let's say, and we were to do the accounting. Now the the situation changed a lot. So we are perceived at, as the partners that drives the, the our our client's agenda. With the project that we've developed, the iLogic, we opened the eyes of the client for uh, what's not wor what was not working in their query resolution, but we also pointed out what's still not working and uh, what they should do as the organization in order to you know achieve the customer satisfaction and to increase the customer experience. So now we are you know, being involved in their discussions um, on the yearly basis um, and being invited for the discussions on how to improve their, uh, their services, how to change their business agenda, how to drive their business goals in order to, uh, to, to improve. Because I it seems like the, the back office is equally important as the service that they do on a daily basis, which is the, sh the, the shipment. So you use some quite strong, um, powerful language there about opening the eyes, eyes of the customer, which is, which, which is great. But in th just to help me understand, what is it that these um, approaches, ideas do? Is it, a, is it is a way of thinking? Is it a philosophy? Is it a toolkit? What, what is it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all combined. So uh, on from the, the client perspective, the back office and the query resolution was a pain. But if we are talking about three and a half thousand queries being solved a day, it is a huge pain. Yeah. Right. So the way you, <laughs> you, you do it, first of all, is try to fix it in, in the most efficient way. But from our perspective as Capgemini is to consider what you can do as a company and what you should do in order not to have the queries at all. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. So this is how Capgemini drives their agenda because we force them for this to think and, and, and to uh, consider the solutions that will change their world and they will no longer have to struggle with such a tremendous volumes of the disputes. Obviously, it is, it is good for us, for the outsourcing company, because we are making money out of you know, solving the nice. queries. But okay. is it our ambition? It's just you know, directing okay. to the question. It is not. Okay, yeah? so, so it's a key, a key part of, of your approach to the market. So that's, that's interesting. Uh, you, you're, you're smiling there. Thank you, Anna. Um, um, I wonder what your, your views are on some of the, the ideas that have been shared so far. I mean, I noticed in, in your, your Diamond presentation, you, you mentioned uh, Lean. W you know, what's your reflection on what you've heard so far and, and the Orange perspective? Okay. From Orange perspective, we, we do, uh, uh, you know, we, we use the tools that works. So uh, from my perspective, using Lean or using Six Sigma or using, uh, for example, Customer Journey, which is another set of tools, it really doesn't matter. And we don't want to, f to be in the formal process of using these tools because the mm. usually the tool toolkits are very oppressive, very heavy. They have some kind of gates, steps, follow-ups, filling the doc documentation. So uh, I've seen many times in, in different companies uh, I work for that the toolkit was a kind of, you know, uh, the framework you, you had to follow. Um, 
currently, uh, uh, from my perspective, in order when you ask people, okay, you are using Lean or Six Sigma, I would say, well, who cares? You know, we just okay. you pick this or this tool and just implement that because we have in mind that we are doing that for the customer. We are doing this for, from mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. eyes of the customer. So we also uh, using the customer journey where we have, uh, where we uh, have the, uh, we, we observe the touch points the customer mm -hmm. have with us as, as a mm -hmm. provider and then um, have the pain points and then address these pain points. It's more easy from his point of view because this customer so uh, first of all, I would say that more important this th this approach that we are mm -hmm. doing this for the customer or uh, and for the whole chain of um, of, of value stream mm. than what we use. Thank th thanks, Eric. And I, I think that brings an important point in this whole discussion about what what is it, <laughs> how does it fit, what are the enablers, and uh, you know wh what are we really talking about? And, and Wojciech, in your great presentation, you, I think, uh, gave a really useful context about the broader strategic um, drivers, enablers of consensus and alignment uh, and strategy. Um, so uh, reflecting what you've heard here, um, is there anything that you can you can bring out about how we need to think about lean and, and six sigma are, are they the same thing well we know they're not but you know what's what's the uh, how, you know how would you how would you help the audience think about the difference between between those two yes yeah, so thank you very much for the question i um, um I'm, I'm always surprised that people put that in the same bucket because i also have a six sigma trauma uh, like after training that lasted for four weeks and was heavy on <laughs> statistics and everything else that i couldn't understand um, and then Lean comes with, uh, with a simplicity mm. of um, just thinking and, and you know, reflecting on what is really important for you, where do you want to focus, and just doing it. And uh, doing very simple things right, helping your people understand uh, what is the direction of your company, mm. helping them visualize what is hidden, hidden in their computers, in their Excel files, showing that on walls you don't really have to use any tool at all. So for the last three years, I, Lean did not teach me any tool. And, uh, and that's fantastic about it. Um, it's just a way you realize your strategy, in whatever mm -hmm. your strategy is. Um, you can think whether you want your people, your specialists on your floor to help you or not. Mm -hmm. If you want them to help you, you have to share your strategic goals with them. Um, it's just a couple of months f for me in Amway, but my people on my finance floor know what are my objectives in my scorecard. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have worked out themselves how they can help me mm -hmm. achieve that. Mm -hmm. Not me personally, but us as a shared service, and uh, us as a GBS, and us as uh, Amway. And that's beautiful. It's not me saying, you know, my target is 20%, so your target is going to be 25%. I hope you meet it, because then I'll meet it as well. And mm -hmm. that's just not right. No, OK. Um, uh, that's, that's what I learned from, uh, from my senseis uh, of Lean. Thank you. OK. Uh, th thanks, Roger. Uh, does anyone want, want to come in add to that, Piotr? Yes, yeah, thank you. I'd like to follow up. Uh, oh, still agree. Um, no fight here. Um, <laughs> th that, that's, that simplicity, Lean, lean is, is simplicity. Just just to give example, so in Fujitsu we've, we've, uh, we do have our own implementation. Our, our own implementation of, of, of Lean is actually an agile Lean. So, so very iterative uh, and, and very um, uh, people focused, uh, enabling them to act. And just to give importance, is, is the first uh, training that the people get joining, joining mm -hmm. us. It, it's of, of a huge importance of mm -hmm. how we do things towards the customers, uh, how we deliver the value. Uh, the, the importance is especially when your customer base is not homogeneous. And we have 75 customers over the world and different branches. And that, that you, 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 won't, you cannot just use one methodology for that. Uh, <coughs> it, it's your people, so we need to enable our people then on the floor, in the first line, to actually get what's important for a particular customer, uh, get that as a, as a value um, for the customer, uh, work on that, really torture it hard, uh, uh, to an extent that it brings the cost uh, uh, cost efficiency in the end 
or, or other improvements, uh, uh, the, the end user satisfaction or, or first time fix uh, increment. But for different customers, it, it may be uh, something completely different. And it is our people getting enabled uh, to, to act freely and to, to raise those as, a, as an improvement points in the service. Okay, oh, thanks, Peter. Derek? Yeah, I, I think it, it, it very much depends on the maturity of the center mm -hmm. and on the, uh, so, so all these tools from Lean Six Sigma, I actually had to look up what Six Sigma <laughs> stands for. <laughs> now, just <laughs> because you just use them so so similar, you you sort of you sometimes uh, forget. So, you I think they're very good. Uh, they're if you don't have them, try them. If you don't do that, do that. But it's fairly basic. What we look now a bit, and I'm now questioning a bit the way we have implemented maybe it is that you look. Sort of like value stream mapping allows you to map the process and look for waste and uh, and value adding activities, right? Perfect. So then you eliminate waste. But is that really the process that the customer wants? Is that so? I, yeah. Mm. Now I was sending an email. Now I send. I was sending a letter. Now I send an email. Yeah. Right, much faster. Great. So done. Tick in the box. I'm better. But so what we're trying, I, and I think that it may sometimes limit you to only looking at this. So it doesn't enable you to make a step change. It's just about here's yeah. where we'll think about the world. Let's make yeah, it just forget better. it and look maybe more. Maybe think again more of Kasha's mum and think uh, you know how does she want the process really to look, and then take it back a bit of the you know now the sexy design thinking and, and things like that. So yes. try to look at that. And I don't know if Lean and Six Sigma or Lean really. I don't have much experience with Six Sigma or Lean enables you to do that. Maybe you have implemented it in a way that I've seen in some of the projects that does it. Maybe we haven't. So, well, let's, that, so okay, that's, that's teeing up the next part of the, the question very nicely then. So let me just try and summarize what I've heard so far. And it's that Lean and Six Sigma are, are clearly different and achieve, uh, fo focus on different things. And there's a different warmth or resonance with, with those two, two, uh, two approaches that we hear from, hear from the group. In particular, it seems that Lean with its uh, speed and flexibility seems to have real current resonance for many of, many of the, the, the party here. Um, and it seems to be about um, helping an organization to think about improvement, um, helping to, to focus on the customer. That has been important in the past, and it's been important to a certain level of maturity. So if that's possibly broadly right, then the question is, in this new world, uh, you know, what, what does it fit? And we he I heard already, I think is where we mentioned, well, Agile, that's been around for a few years. Design thinking is another, another concept as well. So I suppose if I'm a, an organization and we want to completely transform uh, the customer journey, or there's an RPA project. Um, this w we're suggesting that Six Sigma Lean is, is not going to be applicable. D Derek, so you were, I, was, I stopped you. Do you want to carry on? Y do you think it doesn't fit, or it doesn't take you there? Uh, we were talking before. For me, at least from us, we have limited resources. So uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, maybe it makes you think a bit differently. So. So with limited resources, we have to really be careful and choose what we want to get into. Mm. And for us, at least in the last couple of years, it has been RPA more than Lean. Mm. So for better or worse, I liked your statement. I think what we try to still use Lean as is a way, or the methods, some of methods of Lean is a way to transmit our strategy uh, into objectives of the people to make it clear so we so, so for them, that's probably now what we use mostly in uh, with Lean, mm -hmm. uh, or if we can consider it Lean. Uh, and then with our limited resources, we went into robotic process automation. So as the next step, mm -hmm. does that answer yeah, your no, question? No, 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 slightly? That does, that's yeah. the next step. And then now we're sort of coming into, at least f with our, again, limited resources, we're coming into a bit of a glass ceiling. So we're now looking at what else can we do? Okay. And one of these things was mentioned by Kasha. We look into uh, sort of network uh, and, and looking for partners, so treating ourselves more mm -hmm. like an independent company rather than a shared service. And what a company would do, they would look for partners. Nowadays, I think you cannot pretend you can do everything on your own. So we're looking for partners like Etoka or, or things like that to completely change, the eliminate the process. Another, uh, yeah, okay, right. Another way of. Yeah, I mean, we can improve forward. it. Kasha can do the process in five days instead of 40 before, but why do it at all? Okay. If you have a partner, then actually makes it uh, redundant, uh, you know, not needed anymore. It's, it's a good question. 
Thanks, thanks, Derek. I would like also uh, build on that. Uh, I, I share your view. I, I also add that uh, lean tools is kind of, you know, it's kind of an axe, you know, heavy axe but easy to, to operate. Uh, while uh, Six Sigma is kind of very detailed toolkit of scalpel things. So you have to be really trained to operate that. So definitely you, you will not use that in normal situation. Mm. However, we use some statistics, but we don't call it um, uh, Six Sigma. For example, we, uh, apart in, in our center, we, um, we are dealing with um, energy consumption. So we spend like, like, like a company like almost 300 million on cost energy. Mm -hmm. So we calculate that in our center, but also we use statistics using the big data in order to uh, make, uh, make some kind of you know, estimates on that. So in this particular situation, that's fine, yeah? because we, we are using more advanced tool, but for changing the process, uh, simply we, we start with the really, really simple tools and where we need the breakthrough change, like for example with this uh, self-billing, they send us invoices. We, d mm. we, we don't say, uh, send us invoices but better. Mm. We send, don't say, uh, don't, don't send us invoices at all. Yeah? Yeah. So that's breakthrough and uh, b by using Lean or Six Sigma, uh, we, we couldn't obtain that. Right, okay. So, but, uh, but again, not to be, um, or maybe we finish at the end, is like, if you haven't done a value stream map in your organization, do a value stream map, uh, at least for me. I mean, start with that. Don't go yeah. run, you know, f so much ahead. Yes. Use yes. these tools, choose the ones that you want to use and use them for some. We have been using them for four years or five years or even more. So, right, so th there's a sequence of things. Yeah, first things I would, first. I would first things yeah. first. Emma, you, in your um, diamond, you were obviously talking about a robotics um, project and implementation. D do you sense or do you agree with what um, is being said there about robotics being maybe the, a new direction that might push lean thinking to one side? Or do you see them as being able to be in the same room at the same time? Is it one or the other or both together? <laughs> I think that the direction that we are all going is digitalization, and we are talking mm -hmm. a lot about mm -hmm. the digitalization, robotics, yes, absolutely. So we have to start thinking probably what is our role as the human beings in, you know, uh, right. serving the, the new world that we are going to, to be in probably a few years. Um, there are and there will always be some areas that a human being will be needed, and uh, but I think... Uh, this is just a break even right now that, that, that nowadays are, mm. are, are the, the years that we are going in the new direction. Right. So it's not only about the automations, the macro, the uh, VBAs. It, it, it's all about the, the real, autom like a rob robotizing the, the world and, and changing it. Right. So it's all, it's, it's a blend. I, th I think uh, that reflects where many, many organizations are that these things these things run in parallel I suppose it strikes me uh, working in the RPA space is that there's something something about RPA which is slightly different which is um, anti what's the word quick and dirty to use a uh, you know un unpleasant phrase the idea that automation has been is expensive to roll out typically and it's lowered the price of automation by accepting the imperfections of uh, a system and you just layer on top RPA because it, it, it imitates the work that a human does. It kind of says, we're not going to perfect the process, we're just going to automate it and make it quicker. It's kind of anti-improvement, it's just um, speeding it up. So I wonder if there is something in, in, there, about, uh, in there about that. So it'll be interesting to see how, how these, things, these things play out. Uh, yeah, it's all ab about being pragmatic, so RPA is another tool. Yeah, you can use that when you use that tool, when it is good to, to use that. Of course, uh, when we have a lot of uh, IT systems, uh, uh, so mixed uh, complex architecture, adding another tool will make your ar architecture even more complex. So, Right. Yeah, and and uh, definitely, uh, uh, but for example, in our situation, we, we will use the, um, the RPA in a situation when we we are moving with the financial system to the cloud. Mm. So we are not on that, we cannot change that, we have off the shelf 
functionalities, so we cannot have additional improvements. The only way uh, we, we can do that is by uh, applying, uh, doing that by, by, by robots. So put a, put a RPA that do something, you know, in different systems and, and uploads, uh, you know, the results. So this is, this is a situation when definitely you, ne you need to use that, yeah? But in others, uh, sometimes it's better, uh, cleaner, uh, to have the automation, but you know, really uh, mm -hmm. uh, like an interface between systems, mm -hmm. for example. Okay, okay. Thank you. If I may comment on that, yes. Uh, I would like to slightly, I would give a slightly different perspective to that. Um, so, so I think that, uh, that the lean practice will, will goes together with, with RPA. You don't need to decide whether I do lean or RPA. Mm -hmm. Because, well, yes, one of the approaches you might take is, okay, forget about the lean and let's just try storm, let's just try new things. Mm -hmm. Half will fail, half will succeed, you'll get there anyway, uh, maybe a bit more expensive. Uh, but I think when, when you've deployed lean good, um, then the RPA is just the next level, it's just the next step of, of, mm -hmm. of adding, uh, and Alina actually may help to find the, the things that you actually want to make robots or want to m automate. It will help you and eliminate that you know, trying failures that may be even more cost effective. So we, I, I think it, it goes together well. Goes together well. It Thank will you. give you a lot of data for sure to, to make a more conscious decision where you want to re deploy your robots. So for us, the first journey we started with lean and when we decided to sort of start in the robots, we already had a very good idea where we're going to deploy them. We didn't want, we didn't need to look at, okay, so now where? You know, mm -hmm. so I think this department is quite big. Maybe there, no, it's new. Okay, you know, this process takes that much time, that many steps. You know, that's the lead time. That's whatever. Okay, seems to be a good uh, mm. opportunity. So without lean and without all these tools, we'd be just guessing. A bit. Right. We're so we're analytics all, all and data. All, all depends if you think about your own uh, processes in your company or you focus on the customers, and that you know that mm -hmm. that's a bit different. Then, of course, you better know your own processes, and you can go directly blind yeah. and automate them. But when you, you know, want to improve the customer, you have to have something to find out what's the value, what's the biggest yes. value, and then automate around that. Right, so it's data and analytics is, you're wearing its head, void checks. No, I, I have <laughs> to say I really um, uh, like your, your approach. So before I start with any robot on my floor, I'll have to have uh, lean well implemented because that will bring me a lot of knowledge mm. about where do I have broken processes, problems to solve, where uh, robots uh, can potentially help. I cannot agree with one thing that you said about, you know, I invested in robots. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I go for robotics because I can, but because I don't have resources uh, for lean. So um, I, I have t totally opposite. So I cannot afford robotics because it still costs some money, and lean. The only the the only thing that I need to pay is a little bit of uh, advice, or not even advice. Um, it's enough to hire uh, uh, some guys that will ask you smart questions. That's it. Uh, Lean Sensei will not give you the way. He will uh, ask you questions and you will have to find your way. And the thing is, um, it's not about a team that you have to invest in. Uh, the difficulty is you have to do it yourself. Um, so my Lean journey um, and the way we did it different in Infosys and the way I'm going to do it different in Amway is I am leading that. I'm not delegating that. If you delegate it, um, it's lost. Uh, it's just one of those implementations that you did, and you, you, um, you, you know, somebody has it in his or her CV. In my defense, when I when I see, uh, <laughs> it's good to, you know, have a discussion. In the where when I see deploying uh, like effort, I see because you see you think I'm gonna do a robot, so there's gonna be a ponytail guy coming over, you know, doing some coding <laughs> on his <laughs> Apple laptop, and it's done. No, it's a lot of effort documenting it, controlling it, uh, and this is this has to be done by the people on the floor. That's at least our philosophy, the people on the floor. Do all the documentation, map the process, do all the controls, then execute it. So now I have two people working on preparing that robot in a team of 12, and then I'm thinking, let's say, no, as an example, I'm not sure if that's true, but then, then I'm thinking, okay, so another two will be doing a value stream map at the same time, and there's gonna be you know, two on holidays, one on coffee on a coffee break, three only working. Mm, it's okay, so I'm gonna focus on our, on the robotic part, so on the documentation. That's why I would say that for us it was 
uh, at this moment the shift has moved towards more all this framework around RPA rather than doing another lean. But it's only because we've been doing lean for five years or six years or so. So, so not because, yeah, I mean, most of the processes already have a value stream map that should have. It's, it's a good debate. I, I'm afraid we, we, we're not going to finish it, so we'll have, we'll have the fight outside, I think, to, to resolve it. We've got two and a bit minutes left, um, and I think... I get we have a few more minutes. Okay, we can go over. That's, that's great. Th we can have a fight here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, wonderful. Le um, let's, let's do that. I, th I think maybe the thing that's striking me about this discussion is that th is clearly w there's no such thing as a single answer. Um, we've got a suite of options and choices. And there's also, I think, a very interesting idea about maturity, evolution, um, first things first. Uh, and I, th I think that's, that's just a useful way of thinking about these these different tools. There's also, every time we, I think, d dig into it, other things are coming out. So we've got the role of data, we've got the role of analytics, we've got other frameworks like design thinking that may be uh, interesting and important as well. So uh, lots lots to think about. M Mark, should we should we go to the, the floor now? Is that, would you like to do that? Yeah, uh, any, any questions in the, in the? Oh, please. <laughs> Let me challenge you a bit because, you know, uh, I, th I think I heard a few times from you uh, about elimination, elimination of reasons why we do work. Yes, uh, take finance; it's probably uh, the, the the you know uh, the easiest one for us to understand. Uh, invoice processing, yeah. Why why do we at all touch invoices? You know, there is an I I invoicing code in, in place. Why do we have disputes? Let's let's eliminate all the disputes. Why do we have why do we have journal entries? You know, if you have right policies, if you have right. Uh, master data, if you have a good uh, uh, chart of accounts, you would probably not need any any journal vouchers, yes? So uh, the E, uh, the il eliminate piece, uh, you know, if you if you apply this correctly, I don't think we, you need lean, you need Six Sigma, you need robots, because, you know, you would just not do this, this, this work. What do you think? Marek for president. <laughs> 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 if, it were, if it were so simple. <laughs> No, I mean, that's w at least something that I was saying. It's, I mean, it, life is not as easy as I know you provocatively described it. But yes, that's something that we look into. That's why I'm saying that sometimes we go away from lean. And that's what Kasia was mentioning at the end of her story about uh, a company that we, part that we are thinking of. We've actually signed a deal, a contract now to partner with that eliminates completely a part of the process. So eliminates one of the players. So for sure, yes, that's the way. But that's how we approach it. I fully agree with this vision. No, f no finance at all. No, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> no, seriously. Um, but the thing is, you can choose uh, the big boom way and think about let's cancel that, and then you build a project uh, where you employ hundreds of consultants and lots of smart people, and then it doesn't really work. Or you can go continuous improvement way and um, you know eliminate problem by problem and see your finance uh, shrinking year after year by 10%. And in a couple of years, we'll find ourselves in a much smaller green in here. Uh, well, I'd like to add, so no all processes are demons. You know, we don't want to get rid of all of them. They, they, they help as well. They're not only demons that we want to get rid of and eliminate completely. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a finance and invoice expert, but you know, in, in IT world, uh, as an example, you, you can think of a a virtual environment of, uh, you know, for, for 100,000 people across the globe, and then you have to maintain it stable. So what you want to eliminate is like daily checks. You need to daily check things, if they work, if the critical applications for the customer are still there every day because they have to use it every minute. Uh, then, then you automate that. You, you, you automate the checks, uh, and, and you automate the, the fact if something missing, it, it, you, you, you automatically bring it back. This is the things you, you automate to get rid of, you know, an unpleasant process. But the process is, is there. It's just automated um, mm -hmm. because it's a good process. You know, to check if things are still there. It's just, you know, they are not done by humans, right? And that, that's mm -hmm. that's that's mm -hmm. that's the lean, and that's our PA together. It's also about being, you know, check what works. Uh, for example, uh, we use the, um, the, the, the Agile um, approach in which we test the solution that we are going to bring to the, our customer, our clients, and then, the, uh, <coughs> you know, 
we, we asked them, what do, what do you think? Okay, because you wanted this one. It's not yet fully, you know, completed. And sometimes they, they said, you know what? Uh, okay, this is, this is fair enough for now. Uh, I don't, I d I don't w want you to, to cl complete uh, the, 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 the solution. Let's, let's do something else. So uh, this is also the step by step, what, what you just, d d just, just said. Step by step, continuous approach to changing. It's much easier than designing everything from the scratch because once you stop, what you complete de design, your design, it's, uh, you know, the, the, the world has already changed. The, the customers change yes. as they want. <laughs> so yeah, so okay. easier is to, uh, to do that step by step. Yeah. Pragmatic, absolutely. Looking at the clock again, we've got just over a minute and a half. Anna, did you want to come in there? Or I can ask another question of the audience. Uh, any more questions from the audience? And if not, I think the, well the final question then is that um, many in the audience um, uh, will be part of a process improvement, transformation, quality uh, p uh, team. So many of you will be very familiar with this landscape. I wonder if the, anyone on the panel has got any final tips on how to, how to approach this area, how to think about the future. Any, any final words of wisdom for a check? No, no, no words of wisdom, <laughs> simplicity. Uh, so before you use any tools at all, whether it's value stream mapping or anything else, uh, the reflection should come, why do I do it at all? And it's not for KPIs, it's not for SLA. The client is there, we do it for client. So what does he want? And then we come back and use whatever you know, methodology we should be. But again, in a strategic way, it makes more, more sense. I mean, the toolbox usually take it, you know, take the hammer, screwdriver, do whatever is needed and then throw it away. That's not continuous improvement. That has nothing to do with uh, continuous improvement. The last words, Derek. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. I mean, I, I think we've we've covered a, a lot of the areas. I, I like the particularly the approach of of actually trying to. It, it's a people uh, business, and you use this to inspire and engage your people to do better things, and these better things not necessarily have to be lean, I don't know, mm -hmm. but it helps. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say uh, involve your people, involve your customers, set good, uh, well first find those, those uh, value adding points, uh, find KPIs, visualize them, colorful, share them with your people, share them with your customers, it's the way forward to, to work together in a partnership way, and lean is for for such a partnership. Yeah, approach. and do that from the end-to-end -end perspective. So look for the whole value chain, not focus on yourself, on the th or things that you do, but on the entire process, big process. Anna, last I'm one. Sorry, I'm the last <laughs> one to conclude. <laughs> so to conclude is just, uh, my recommendation is just remember to involve the client. Yeah, We can change their world, we can do a lot, but without their dedication, involvement, and understanding how we breathe. We breathe with the lean. This is what the outsourcing about. This is what, I this is the essence of the outsourcing, but not necessarily our clients do. So I would recommend to invite the clients into the discussion and, and to drive the, the, the agenda and to make sure that whatever we do, we do not just lose the resources and efforts and energy on implementing things that could be easily changed only if the customer proceeds with some changes on their side. Because it, yeah. it is also a lean. It is not only about robot, you know, pr producing the robots just to fix something what's not working from the accounting perspective, from the background, but it might be changing the client and their environment, their right. systems, their, mm, uh, you know, whatever they do on a daily basis. Th th thanks, Anna. So some great, great tips there, great energy, good discussion. Uh, we're out of time. I have really enjoyed the contributions, it's been an excellent panel. Um, thanks for your attention, your questions, and uh, Malik, back to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it seems we still need uh, lean, we still need Six Sigma, we still need robotics, and in all those things. So you don't agree with me that we should eliminate things and not have them at all. Uh, let's see what the, what the future will bring. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we have to probably learn other jobs. Um, thank, thank you to the panelists, Paul Morrison, uh, Ania Ordoska, uh, Arek Kieres, Piotr Jankowski, Dariusz Bazeli, and Wojtek Karpiński. Thank you very much, guys, and I would thank like you. also to thank uh, 
uh, Lean Passion, who was one of the sponsors of this of the stream. Thanks.